This is the brand new ASUS Chromebook. And I wanted to answer two questions. Can I use it for programming? And should I use it for programming? The short answer is yes. The long answer is it depends. After unboxing the laptop, I immediately booted up the device and went through the setup process to get the laptop ready for programming use. This specific model is the ASUS CX5601FB. It's running the 12th generation of the Intel Core i-series processor, making it much more powerful than any Chromebook I've used. For those who are unaware, a Chromebook is just like a laptop that runs Chrome OS, and this still lets you run Android applications, Linux applications, and much more. So firstly, let's take a look at a quick unboxing as well as what's included as part of this Chromebook, because I do know that some come quite light, whereas this has a few additions and ports that you might not be used to, especially for a Chromebook. I took a closer look at the keyboard, one of the most important devices for a programmer. The keys have a nice bounce to them. They also have a white backlight, so you can see the in the dark. I also like how there's space here for the arrows, which allows me to move my hand over this area knowing that I'm up to the arrow keys. There's also room here for a numpad since this is a large device. This is great and something I'm not used to in laptops these days. Having options for delete as well as backspace or even being able to do page up and page down in large documents can make it easier rather than hitting function keys, which is a good thing because we don't even really have those. Instead, we have a number of keys here that do everything from increase the volume to change the brightness or even mute. On the side, we have the USB-C port, which can be used traditionally or to charge as well as a regular USB 3 port. There are also buttons here to increase or decrease the volume or turn it on and off. On the other side, there was another USB-C port as well as a HDMI output and a headphone jack, which can be useful. And finally, an SD card slot reader. The setup is pretty simple. You just log in with your Google details, but you also have the benefit of being able to sync everything with your device when you do this. This is great because all your bookmarks as well as extensions, history, and lots more get saved as part of this process. Within five to 10 minutes, I had finished the setup and I was on the desktop. Here, I enable dark mode because that's the very first thing that all developers need to do. And as something different, I wanted to try the tablet mode for this Chromebook. I did hear that you can rotate it to any angle and I tried in this V-shape, basically allowing me to prop it up almost like it's on its own little stand. And this way I can sort of watch it or view it in any angle that I want, which I think would be pretty cool if I was doing some research or learning some new programming languages. Now it's time for coding. I'm gonna install a VS Code since this is my favorite IDE. In terms of installing it, normally I download an executable for a Windows machine or a Mac, but here on Chromebook, we download a dev version, which works on Linux. It's important to check what CPU architecture you're running on. There are some Chromebooks which only run on ARM, and there are some limitations to that processor type. Since this is using the Intel processor, a 64-bit one at that, I'll be able to download the regular dev version here, which should essentially mean that my VS Code runs a lot faster than usual on a Chromebook. I couldn't launch it just yet though, because there are a few additional steps I needed to take in order to get it up and running. I need to open up the terminal, and then I need to run an app get update and install a couple of things. I jumped into my terminal option over here, and I had a look, and now it's called Penguin, which is odd, but I opened it up and I had my console ready here. I copy pasted the command because this is what all good developers do rather than typing it out manually. The next step was to install the package which is called GNOME Keyring and this should allow me to take further steps in installing VS Code. And then I read through the rest of the documentation here on the VS Code website, which I'll actually link in the description below because it's quite useful to get a Chromebook up and running. With the Linux development environment enabled and my applications updated, I should now be able to go ahead and install VS Code. VS Code does recommend that you double check your CPU architecture. You can run print architecture to do that. Here it shows up as ARM64, so I've downloaded that package and I'm going to select to install it. Unlike Windows or Mac, this installs in just a few seconds and I should be able to now open it up. To do this, I opened the launch menu and then just selected it from the options. And from here, I just noticed that it was a vanilla version with no extensions whatsoever. I wanna install all my favorite extensions by syncing them with my normal environment on my PC. And I can do this by simply signing into GitHub. I selected to turn on the sync option and then selected to sign into my account, which currently is a GitHub account. And I just went through that process, which only took a few seconds. 
After that, the autosync automatically turned on and started installing all of my extensions through my hotspot, so I decided to quickly connect it to my Wi-Fi. Now my extensions are all installed, including things like VS Code icons, which I always use for folders, as well as the One Dark Pro theme, which I think is really important so that your VS Code looks good, as well as Live Server, which I use a lot when I'm viewing HTML files, and things like GitHub Copilot, which I think is absolutely necessary these days. I also have a few extras like Beautify as well as Babel JavaScript, as well as the auto rename and auto close tag, which make coding in HTML easy. I want to take this a step further. I want to see if I can use this as my standalone device. And to do this, I'm going to spend at least an entire week or maybe even two just using this one single device for everything that I do. And I'll see what it's like when this replaces my entire workstation. I headed down to my local cafe, not to just get a coffee, but to test out this device. I want to get a real good feel for not just how it's like using a more powerful Chromebook, but also just using it on the go as a proper portable device. From this aspect, I want to test out the keyboard to use it for a long period of time, as well as trying out different activities that I normally do throughout the day. This includes things like planning scripts for videos or doing some programming for a website, but it also involves browsing some YouTube and watching some tutorials, which I can do quite well here in the portable mode, which I found quite useful. The battery lasted surprisingly well. As a Chromebook, I'm guessing it's not running too many things in the background, but I was able to open up VS Code, run on a Create React app project for most of the day, and I didn't have to worry about the battery life at all. In terms of maybe running more demanding workloads, that could vary. Okay, so I'm on to my second day of using the Chromebook. I've been using it everywhere I go, but most of the places I've gone so far have had internet connections. Today, I went down to a local shop which didn't have Wi-Fi, and this is where I got to learn something new about the Chromebook. One of my misconceptions was that I thought I'd always have to have an internet connection. But when I didn't have one, I found that all the apps still work. This is because most apps these days are designed to be offline ready. So while general browsing won't work, just like it wouldn't work on any laptop without internet, you can still launch applications. Just like VS Code, for example, launching up a dev environment to start working on, or even all sorts of other types of applications. And this can include applications like Figma that might be available on the Google Play Store or even Android applications. So yes, while working offline is available, I still do need to prep some things beforehand if I'm going to work on doing any development stuff, such as backing up my database, my files and my content so that I can actually launch them up and work on them offline. Otherwise, I have to head all the way back home to do that now. I took a look at the last Chromebook video I did, and I actually found out that quite a few programmers do in fact use Chromebooks to create both designs as well as projects. I'm in the process of creating a brand new design for my friend Jesse for his website. I'm doing half of this on my computer and the half on the Chromebook because I wanted to test out what it's like using applications like Figma to design different things on here. Developers and designers alike will often have to jump into applications like Figma because we'll need to be converting designs over or building them or just looking at different mockups and layouts. In the past, I've tried to do things like this on my MacBook, but I always found the screen to be just a little bit too small to be comfortable on. This could be because my MacBook is 14 inches, but this 16 inch Chromebook was much more comfortable to design on. I had enough room here that the Figma menus on the left and right hand side never got in the way of me seeing the design itself. And generally speaking, I was able to put together this design in a few hours without any problems whatsoever. So one thing I can say for certain is that if you're looking to design different websites, applications like Figma now make this possible on any device, including a Chromebook, so you don't have to run an operating system like Windows or Mac OS. Designing on this laptop or Chromebook went quite well. Tomorrow, I want to do some more programming. I'm working on this TikTok project where I'm uploading videos and then presenting them. So there's a bit of front end and back end. And I want to see how this device handles doing all of that. So I took this Asus Chromebook out again. I know that working from home is much more normalized these days, but personally, I always like exploring the city as well as areas around while also taking my work along with me. Right now, I'm working on this TikTok application, which actually is on GitHub and I can sync regularly across my mobile device and my desktop. I was a little smarter this time, making sure that my entire project was synced before I went out. 
This included the database as well as the video files so that I could load it up wherever I went even if I didn't have an internet connection. And so what I've realized is that working on this Chromebook is pretty much just the same as working on a laptop. Sure I might not have a traditional desktop but I've got VS Code which is all I need. It's been about two or three weeks now and I'm actually kind of surprised at what this Chromebook can do and what it can't do as well. If for example you're looking at doing designs I think this is what surprised me most the fact that this can handle most of that. I do most of my work in Figma and Figma is in the cloud. So a Chromebook, which basically runs Chrome is perfect for that solution. I found myself doing quite a lot of design work on this laptop from this Chromebook and I actually kind of enjoyed the bigger screen for it. In terms of programming, the Asus Chromebook was surprising too because I was able to do pretty much anything that I would normally do on a PC or a Mac on here besides emulate iOS or Android devices, which you would normally need a much more beefy machine to do. I also took a look at the comments from the last video I did on a Chromebook and using it for programming. And what surprised me was that a lot of people actually use Chromebooks at university or for study learning how to code on things like free code camp or even just watching YouTube tutorials and then just replicating those tutorials on their Chromebook. I think that's one of the differences these days. You don't just have to get a Windows laptop or a Mac laptop, you can consider a Chromebook as well. So I think I'll continue using this Chromebook. It's one of the reasons that I didn't just put it down after a week, but now two or three weeks later, I'm still finding myself picking it up and taking it with me when I'm working on the road. Of course, it might not replace an entire desktop. For example, I do a lot of video editing and a lot of other stuff, so having a fully dedicated desktop can help. But for a mobile device, I think this performs quite well. 